Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Got it. All right, all what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Bama Saltwater Fishing video. Mom is with me once more. We have plenty of shrimp, plenty of fiddler crabs, and a nice cooler full of ice. And we're going to get out and to go do some fishing. Y'all come join me. Let's get on the water and get to fishing. See how this goes. The canal's not too busy, so we should be able to fish it pretty comfortably. And I'm going to be using a Carolina rig to fish along this seawall here. I just have a half ounce egg weight, barrel swivel, about a foot and a half of eight pound fluorocarbon leader, and a size eight owner Mewtwo light circle hook. Let's go ahead and get a fiddler crab hooked up. This is a live fiddler crab. All I like to do is take my hook and go right below its belly and just come out the top of the shell. You want to be very careful not to crack their whole shell. So that's why I like using these Mewtwo light circle hooks by owner because they're a thinner wire. So that's a baited up filler crab. Let's go ahead and cast it out here on the bottom and see if we can pick us up a sheep's head or some form of drum. All right, I got this filler crab on the bottom. I'm just going to open my bale and keep my finger on the line because with this braided line, I can feel that bite. Oh, this sucker's going to kick up some weight. If he, was, if he had any manners, it would slow down. You'll just have to hold on. I doubt, I don't know if he's gonna slow down or not. Doubt it. No, nah, he ain't gonna slow down. They don't care. All right, move spots again. Hook up another fiddler crab. We're just trying to move around, find some fish. Let's get a fiddler crab out here. Just parallel to these rocks. There we go. Oh, I got one. Oh, I got one. Ah, dang it, man. That was a freaking good fish. Broke off my eight pound leader. Big freaking sheep's head. I just lost that really nice fish. Not exactly for sure what it was. I think it was a nice sheep's head personally. Let's cast out another filler crab. I did upgrade my leader to 20 pound fluorocarbon. The other day we were fishing really clear water, but right now it's not clear at all. It is very dirty. So you don't have to worry about them seeing your leader as much in the dirty water. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Got it. You want to get the net, please? Yeah. Oh. Heck yeah, dude. That's a good fish. Oh, come on now. I upgraded my leader, so I feel a little more comfortable. That's a good fish. Yes, man, will be. That's a sheep's head. That's a nice one, too. There you go. It's coming. It's fighting hard. Yeah, he's. Especially in this current. That's a big one. <laughs> that's a big and <laughs> That's a big sheep's head. This is like the size of yours yesterday. Come on, buddy. He's digging. Come on. There we go. Mom with the net job. That's a stud. <laughs> That's a stud sheep's head if I've ever seen one. We've. <laughs> That's a stud sheep's head. <laughs> Heck yeah, dude. Woo! Thank you. Thanks for the net job. <laughs> Check out that stud of a sheep's head. Heck yeah. 21 inches to the fork length. This one measured out to be. That's pretty dang big sheep's head they have to be 12 inches to the fork minimum size in alabama this one is well over the minimum size so he's going in the cooler they have some serious munchers on them check that out that's what they used to eat oysters barnacles crabs really anything they want any type of crustacean they're very good at stealing your bait we call these convict fish because of that and also because of those black and white stripes what a beautiful fish these things can steal some bait, but I'm glad I was able to get them after about the third try. So let's put him in the cooler. Go ahead, drop back down and get another one. Y'all, so I'm holding this thing up and on my boga grip, which is a very accurate scale. Hands shaking because it's my bad wrist, but this fish is over seven pounds sheep's head. What a stud sheep's head. <laughs> over seven pounds on the boga. That's freaking awesome. Leader's still good. Hook's still good. But well, let's go ahead and hook another filler crab up. Da -da. Oh, there's one. Oh, got him. Oh, dang. 
Dang it. Had him. Dang, he took. Do I have it? What the heck do I have? Pinfish? Croaker. A little bait thief, ain't he? I think that sheep's. Oh, you got one? Oh, mom's fine. Oh, my back. Ugh. Mom's got one. <laughs> you got it. There you go. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Good fish. It's coming in. Got nothing but open water. You got it. It's coming in. Ready? <laughs> there you go. He hopped in there. <laughs> Might have to measure that one. Hey. <laughs> That's a good one though. Good job. Heck yeah. Now that one's a keeper though. Look at that nice sheep's head. That's your average size. All right, mom just got a nice sheep's head. Not as big as the other one, but this is still a nice keeper, about average size. So they have to be 12 inches, like I said, from the nose to the fork. He's a 16 inches to the fork, beautiful fish. So heck yeah, still got a nice set of chompers on them, <laughs> on the fiddler crab. We're gonna head back to the house and let's go clean those fish. We did pretty dang good, at least mom and I both got one. We're gonna go ahead and clean these sheep's head, fillet them out and get ready to cook them. If you do want to pick up some of my Bama Saltwater hand tied sheep's head rigs, they're on my website as well, which I'll link down in the description below. It's bamasaltwater.com. And I'll hand tie you up some sheep's head rigs. You just pick whatever weight and type of hook you want. Check out the size of this sheep's head. So this is about average size right here. So that's the one mom just recently caught. It's crazy how quick they lose their color sitting on ice. But check out this sheep's head. This thing is as big as a black drum. This is a 65 quart Yeti. And check out that behemoth of a sheep's head. Man, what a beast. Let's go ahead, get it on the cleaning table here. We'll start out with this one. I'll show you, it'd be a great example to show you how to clean, but they're all the same. They have a really big rib cage. So most of the meat's gonna be this top loin coming out to the back here. And go ahead and start out with a sharp knife. This is a Dexter. I like to use them all the time. They're just cheap and they seem to get the job done. We'll go ahead and flay this fish up. If you don't wanna see any of the fish cleaning for certain reasons, you can go ahead and skip past this point and then we'll get into the cooking. But as of right now, let's go ahead and clean these fish. Okay, so I have a electric bubble blade that I used to skin it, but everything I pretty much do with this knife. This is a, that's a huge sheep's head. I haven't caught a big sheep's head like this in like, in ages. Check out those teeth on him. I think he needs a dentist, don't you? Look at that. Look just like a human's teeth. So crazy, isn't it? <laughs> that's why, uh, that's why you want to use small hooks because I barely have any lips to get that hook in. They have mostly molars. But let's go ahead and cut into this fresh one. First cut I like to do, as with any fish, Go behind that gill and then they have a big rib cage and thick scales once you get through the scales it's not too bad so come down get under those scales and we're good there now the next thing i like to do is take my knife cut away from you get under the scales and run right along that back dorsal fin there just like this you don't want to miss any meat so i want to be very careful there we go now really simple once you come along and open up the back, I like to take my knife, just run it carefully while using my hand to pull the flesh away from the bone and just run your fillet knife along the bone. This one's a little bit bigger knife than I personally like to use, but I kind of lost a few of my knives. So that's all I got right now. But you want to run that knife just right along, get all that flesh off the bone. And then once you get to their spine, you want to go up and over and then i like to poke that knife all the way through and just bring it all the way to the back but don't cut through the tail now once i cut all the way through i want to come up over here and get over this rib cage so i'm going to point my knife and just try to fillet this meat over their rib cage here hear their air bladder or their swim bladder they have a big rib cage Just flay it right off, have thick skin. There we go. Now most of this is rib cage and belly meat. Yes, you can eat some of that, but I, I usually just leave the rib cage in there and then you have a beautiful fillet right here. And what I like to do is take, cause I sucked at doing this with a regular knife. I take an electric knife like this Bubba blade purely just to skin this fish. So I take this electric knife, it's a big piece there. 
just like this. I'll try to do it in one fluid motion. You don't want to miss any meat. And then that should be a beautiful boneless fillet of fish. Now this sheep's head is a big sheep's head. Normally the smaller ones are better to eat, especially in any big fish because of this bloodline here. So I'm gonna cut out that bloodline because that's what's gonna make these fish taste fishy. Any fish is if you have that bloodline in there. So we'll go ahead and trim that up. But they do have some beautiful meat. This one's just really big, so he has a lot of uh, fish juice in him. And so we'll go ahead and trim that line out. So what I like to do is go through the middle best you can and get out that red meat. Now everybody has their own way of cleaning their fish. This is just my way. You don't have to do it this way, but this is just the way I like to do it. So, so that's pretty good there. There's going to be a really nice sheep's head fillet. We'll go. We'll clean that up. And I'm going to cut this one in half because that's a big piece. Get that bloodline, most of it out as I can. There's a little bit more red meat in there. A little bit of red meat isn't going to hurt, but a whole lot, like that's the main part you want to get out because that will taste really fishy. It'll turn gray when you cook it. It just won't be that good. There's a beautiful one side of the sheep's head with no red meat, no bones, ready to be cooked however you like. They taste very good because their diet, it consists mostly of, you know, shellfish and crustaceans. So if you eat crabs and oysters and you're a fish, you're probably going to taste pretty good. So let's go ahead and throw these on ice after we clean them up and then finish flying up the rest of these. So I pulled out the uh, contents of what the fish has been eating. I have to be careful how I say things because of YouTube's uh, policy, but these are barnacles. That's what's in its uh, stomach, are barnacles. So it's been munching them like crazy with those teeth and molars. And look at that, that's a barnacle shell. A lot of times you'll see shrimp in their stomach. You'll see little blue crabs, but majority of the time in these sheep said, and even redfish, you'll see these barnacles and oysters. So let me finish cleaning these up. We'll head upstairs, get our seasoning, and get ready to cook. All right, y'all, we're outside. Got my fresh sheep's head. I only kept one sheep's head and cleaned it. I actually had a friend that really likes to eat fish, so I gave him the other two, but this was plenty off that one sheep's head for me. So what I have here is I already melted some butter, just some regular salted butter in a bowl, and then I have some Chef Paul's Blackened Redfish Magic on a plate this is really simple i'm cooking on a flat top griddle this is a black stone i'm just going to get a little bit of extra virgin olive oil just to make sure our fish doesn't stick when we put it on there so it should already have a nice coating on there just using one side of the burner so let me move this out of the way i do have some bread too i'm gonna toast and bobo's out here what's up buddy what's up buddy all right let's take these beautiful pieces of sheep's head check out that meat man just want to get a just little coating of butter flip it on each side of the plate we're blackening it today so that's a little much seasoning if you don't like as much you don't have to do that much but i like this blackened seasoning and let's set it on the grill this is truly blackened fish i did this a while ago and i'm like man i gotta do that on video because it tasted so good and it's just quick and simple when you get back from fishing at the end of the day Last thing you want to do, or if you have real quick time to eat lunch, last thing you want to do is do a whole bunch of layers of food and sit there and wait for something to be done. So I just do this really simple blackening here. It should turn out pretty good. And then hopefully I should have some leftover butter to do my toast with. This one sheep set actually produced a good bit of meat. Normally you got to clean a whole bunch to get a lot of meat off of it. Check out that sport fisher coming by. He's a pretty boat. Well, let me go ahead and get the rest of these on there. All right, those will cook about three to four minutes on each side. You don't want to overdo it, but they are kind of thick. So we'll let those cook for about three to four minutes. Let me go get some fresh butter for my toast and we'll be right back. Bobo, you hanging around, huh, buddy? He wants to go downstairs and play. Come on, get away from the grill. All right, let's go ahead and flip them. It's been about three minutes. And that piece looks good. The thicker piece, I'll probably let cook just a little longer. But blackening, I mean, there's a reason it's called blackening. Because you cover it up in seasoning, and you get that nice grilled blackening layer right there. And it just tastes so good. 
especially on a sweet fish like this. But man, this is one sheep's head. It's so crazy because normally you get one sheep's head, you don't get that much meat off of it. But this was a eight pound sheep's head on the Boca grip and 21 inches to the fork length. So I figured this was plenty of meat for me. Go ahead, flip that nice, big, beautiful piece. There we go. This is the last piece. All right. We're gonna let these finish cooking same time on that side. You just want them done, but you don't want them overdone because it will dry out. And dried out fish is no good. Now I just got a couple pieces of toast, real small thin strip of butter. We are in the south, so I do like butter. But I'm gonna let that melt on that side and we'll do our toast there. All right, let's throw our bread on. There we go. Now these should be about ready here. Start plating. It doesn't take long to do fish at all, especially thinner pieces. There we go. This is a big piece. Man, check out that. That's perfectly cooked. Perfectly blinded. Go ahead, flip it. These here. Put these pieces of toast over the heat. But do those just not look so delicious and tasty? And I like spicy seasoning. And you really can't go wrong with anything Chef Paul Prudhomme's. But this is specifically the black and red fish magic which it works on any type of white flaky fish like this. All right, our two pieces of toast should be done. Bring that over here next to our fish. Now I'm gonna start plating up. I got me a nice fresh plate. Should be really good. There we go, just cut that in half. Now I got some of that nice piece of toast. Let's grab us a nice couple fillets of sheep's head. And then lastly, I'm gonna use some of this Louisiana tartar sauce. You can use anything you like, but my goal here is to keep it pretty simple. Can't go wrong with some basic tartar sauce. Check out that plate of food. Oh man, I just know how good sheep's head tastes. So I'm so excited to eat that. Kept it really basic and it didn't take long at all. So let me go ahead and grab a fork and uh, try a bite of this food. Whew, can't wait. I'm just gonna try the piece of fish by itself first, just to make sure everything's good. But man, that's a flaky white meat. I can't wait to try this. All right, here we go. Oh, if you like blackened fish or grilled fish, this is delicious. I don't think I could have done it any better myself, personally, but still keep it simple. Check out how white that meat is. Let's get another bite here. Just by, just of the fish by itself. Mmm. That seasoning complements that white flaky fish so well. Now let's try a bite with the tartar sauce. Don't want to overdo it. There we go. Mmm. That tartar sauce is actually pretty good. It doesn't taste like cheap tartar sauce, even though it's only like $2 or something for that whole bottle. So it's actually pretty good. It tastes homemade. Let's grab another bite of white flaky fish, some tartar sauce. Put it on that piece of toast. Now here's the prime bite, the money bite right there. Mmm. <laughs> That's better than a lot of fish I've had in restaurants. Mmm. And I know exactly where that fish came from, who cleaned it, and what it is. Like that is absolutely delicious. If you catch you a sheep's head or any white flaky fish, you definitely need to try it this way. You can do this on top of a stove too, but doing it on the Blackstone outside is nice because we have such a beautiful view, even though it's a cloudy day, but it's a beautiful view and it's just nice to be outside. It's just delicious. Let's, let's do another bite on that piece of bread. Mmm. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. <laughs> mm, that is so good. Dang. 
I wish y'all could try this right now, but hopefully you can try this recipe at home. If I can find a good link for it, I'll try to link everything I use down in the description below. But this is that Black and Red Fish Magic by Chef Paul Prudhomme's. We buy it in the big tub because you see I like to use it a lot. So I still have a bunch of fish. I'm gonna save it for when the family gets home and they can try some too because last time I cooked this, they said, you gotta do that again. I appreciate y'all for staying tuned as always. If you enjoyed this style of video and enjoy these catch and cooks, don't forget to like and comment down below. It helps out the channel immensely and I really appreciate it. And it's awesome to hear from everybody. So I appreciate you for watching as always. Thank you for tuning in to another Bama Saltwater Fishing video. Can't wait to finish this delicious food. I wanna thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. And we'll see ya later.